first of all, welcome all of you. And I have to ask if I'm being loud enough. I'm loud enough, okay. I'm gonna welcome all of you and I'm going to make believe I'm painting on a street corner because I've been painting on the street corner since 1974, 1973 actually, and I miss it. But now I'm self-quarantined and I'm here. Let me be honest, I wanna change the world. And what is happening these last couple of weeks is very frightening to me because suddenly right is on both sides and wrong is on both sides. And it is because we don't know each other. When I was a little kid, when I was eight years old, in Vienna, Austria, which is a country and the city I was born in, Hitler came and I'm Jewish. And suddenly this friendly, wonderful city and area became dangerous for me. Dangerous to those whom they don't know. Which brings me to my paintings. All I did was draw and paint real people, and I didn't know why. Until one day, when I was an adult, with adult children, my son who had become a psychotherapist said, Mom, why do you only paint real people? And the answer that came out was as shocking to him as it was to me. I said, if they knew us, they wouldn't hurt us. And <coughs> we don't know each, each other. Let me just have a drink of water. We're all as we are <coughs> in this subway car. We're all together and we don't speak to each other. Look at them. They sit in their own world and in the streets they kill each other. And I would need to stop that. And so what I'm going to do in these series of Facebook things, I'm going to isolate people and explain them to you. How do I go about it? I'm going to begin with people who look different. These are the children who are teased. How come he's different? These are the people who are ignored. They're so old, what do they know? And we're going to begin this way. I'm going to finish this painting. At least I'm going to finish painting it at, on Facebook. Until it's finished, then I'll bring it back again. Because what I learned in working in the street, that it takes thinking to finish something. You can have a lot of fun with it until you tie up the, until you tie up the complete thing. And then I would always take it away and stay at home with it and do it when I could think. And I will do that. And when I'm finished, we'll do that. But until then, I'm going to do a little bit of painting here. And I picked a Chinese person to be in a very important spot because lately we've zeroed in on the enemy and suddenly it seems to be China. And since I escaped the Holocaust by being, when we were given visas to Panama, my first best friend was Chinese. I had never seen anybody Chinese in my life before because in Vienna, Austria, the whole world was white in 1938, which gave Hitler a wonderful chance to murder. One group alone, I believe, leads to danger. Mixtures lead to understanding, but not if we don't look at them. And 
one of the wonderful people I've met during working on the street and doing this series of paintings is Dr. Joe. And I wrote to him and I said, what could you say for me that I could say when I do the Facebook speech? And he said that anger is a good thing because it leads to change. But if you do it without respecting the people, then it doesn't work. And so when you begin to look at the people we'll talk about, do it with respect because otherwise, who knows if our planet can exist much longer if we kill each other the way we do now. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I got a call from Harvey Wiesenberg and many years ago, my husband is a con was a concentration camp survivor. And what he explained to me was that the only thing that kept him alive was his anger and his rage. And when he was free and in America, he knew that if he didn't get rid of the anger, it would kill him. It would destroy him. And the way he got rid of the anger and the hate, he became a volunteer in the prison system. And what he, what he taught me was not to be afraid. And so I'm not afraid of saying that in my eyes, everybody is a victim if they hate. Okay, anyway, Harvey works with people of, I don't like to use the word disabilities, let's say of different abilities. So I'm going to begin with this. And he asked me to do a series of drawings because what he noticed was that now during the epidemic, children who are living in safe houses, it, they don't mention how many of them died. They just mention numbers, but not of who it is. And that suddenly they're not mentioned. And I want to mention them. I'd like to begin with a drawing that I did of a photograph of Harvey's. Because I mentioned to my daughter, how do I do a series of drawings that say what I want to? And she said, just use love. And I think this picture says it like nothing else. Okay, so let me begin first by when I, uh, my husband Eric once said, we've got to do a book using your drawings, and the book should be against prejudice. And let's begin with people who don't look like anybody else. And then he said, go to Harvey and find out how to get entrance into these places. And we went to Harvey and we got entrance. And I took my drawings and I'll be working on them continually and showing them to you. And the first thing you have to learn is not to look at what people look like. Okay? Okay. Now let me go back. Let me start painting, okay? I brought everything to here, but not the brushes. Excuse me. Tell us where we go. Because we move everything so that this could be done correctly. Thank you. But I did forget the brushes. 
This is the way I paint normally. Thank you. My whole family is part of this. close to 91, so I'm not that agile. <laughs> okay, now I know what I'm doing and how to go about it. There's those of you who like you, to paint. Hetty, you have a question. Tell us how you choose the color and brush from Deirdre. How do you choose the color and brush? How do I choose the color and brush? The brush should be the right size for the spot I want to do. And the color, I keep trying all kinds of colors. And then I find out if they work. But first, I had a cloth that I put on my clothes that I you know, a big one, a big t-shirt that I thought I brought to the front. Jesse, thank you. Yes, mm -hmm. that's it. I am not known for being very organized, but I'm learning. If you have a lot of people helping you, they can do the organizing. Okay. About the brushes, I need to clean them up. Because when I put them here, I did undercoating. And so, these are the brushes I use most of the time. Though I have a million brushes. Let me take a strong one. And my glasses. My undertones are brown. And what I would do now is I take a little bit of pink flesh color and white and a little bit of brown and see if it works. It works. <laughs> see, oil is a very peculiar... Am I able to be heard? Okay. Oil is a very peculiar thing. It doesn't listen to you. And it forces you, by becoming unbelievably ugly, to let it decide what it wants. And so, you don't just go in and do it. You keep trying. Grandma? Yes. People are saying some things. Uh, Joanne said, Hetty is terrific and wonderful. This is such a joyful gift that she is giving us now. Thank you. And Hernan says, we love Hetty. And Jerry says, Dad and I love you, Hetty. And Rona says, Rona and Johanna are so excited to be watching. And they have these exploding hearts. And Deirdre had another question for you, which was... Do you typically begin painting details or the background first? This is a very difficult question to answer because I love the details and I really fight to do the details as soon as I can and I'm always wrong. And so every time I do a detail, 10 minutes later, I wasted my time because it doesn't fit in. <laughs> so I I need to become a different person. I need to control this desire. For example, in her case, first she was a blonde and then I had too much yellow. 
And so I tried different colors on her hair. And all you did was look at her hair. And I wanted you to see everybody. So I gave her a scarf. At the moment, the scarf is going to be some form of red. But I would love to put flowers or shapes into it. So that has to wait. <laughs> and it, I hate waiting because underneath everything, there are trials and errors. And the funny thing is this, because these are not real people. I went to my sketchbook and I looked and made sure that I did one of each of us. I have a Muslim woman. I have a Christian lady. I have a Jew with a yarmulke. I have Chinese. I have brown. I have black. I have, I guess, He's really supposed to be a very clean suburbanite, but he kept changing because he didn't fit in. So I sort of aged him a bit. And she was Hispanic. And then I needed a child in there. And I had a child over here. There was a woman here originally whom I had to get rid of because I needed him. And I had a little girl holding on to her. And then I thought, wait a minute, a little girl couldn't be holding on to somebody in the subway. She would be sitting on somebody's lap, otherwise she would fall. So I made her pregnant. Hmm. You can do anything if you're an artist, anything. But if you do oil, the oil tells you what it wants. See what I'm doing now? I'm bringing in a dark brown. Was there, did I answer the question correctly? Yes. Okay. Yes. Grandma, there are a few more comments. Could I read them to you? I'd love it. Um, Rhonda? said, you need to stay exactly you. We love you, Rhonda and Casey. And Christina said, Chris, Christina, and Amelia here. We're so excited to be watching. Hetty, you and your art are a gift to us all. We love you. And Christopher said, love listening to Hetty's stories behind these characters. And Joanne said, it's fascinating and encouraging to listen to your process. The evolution on the journey is making me feel so empowered because you keep reminding us to figure out everything as we go along our way. Uh, Johanna says, love your art, your insight, your thoughts, your gift of understanding people is beautiful, to which Deirdre agreed. Uh, Janine said, this is so fascinating. I am loving this. And one more question. Joanne asked, would using acrylics ever work? I just need to understand more about oils. I would love to tell you about acrylics. They do everything that you wish for. They dry, they do everything you want, but they don't do what oil does. Oil adds mystery because you never know when you put a stroke there. You never know what that stroke will look like because the undertones keep popping out. Right now, I'm liberating this young person because oil allows it. But if I don't do it slowly and carefully, I won't know. Now you see, I can't afford for his clothes to be brown because there's too much of that. And by the way, when this painting is finished, find a way of having it in view because the beauty of oil is the different lights make it do different things. I don't know how to explain, maybe because it glows which is what makes it so difficult. And maybe the only reason I'm doing this is because I know so many of you. 
and you're as lost as I am. How do we handle the world that exists now? Unless we really know these people. Unless we take a risk and let me tell you what to do with the homeless and this I learned. I wanted to do something because I met so many and they spoke to me and I said to one woman what's the worst thing in your life and she says that I can't find a bathroom because if I come with my bags and I even if I have the money to buy a cup of coffee they won't let me in why do they treat me this way I used to work I used to work in the garment center and then they shipped all the work overseas and I couldn't pay the rent when they tore my old building down because the new buildings are too expensive and this was a very sweet woman in a way when I do her though that's not her I think of her because one day I saw a man pass by and give her a bag and she thanked him and a little while later another man walked by and she gave him the bag and later on I went to her and I said what was in that bag and why did you give it away she said it was a bag of apples he wanted me to have them but I ain't got no teeth so I can't eat. So I gave them to the next person I know. Maybe you should begin that. Maybe all of us should pass good things on. How much time do I have? A little under 10 minutes and there's some more things. Can I, can I read you some of the questions? Yes. Okay. And I love all of you. And you'll see the painting when it's finished. Liz Zinn said, love you and love hearing your voice. Oh, Ken. <laughs> um, and Tammy Smith said, I looked forward all week to your painting. By the way, Tammy is the reason I began all of this. Because we met once and she wanted to know about my paintings. And said, where are these? And I went to all my things to get information because I write a story with everything. And now when my grandson, Jesse, is doing my website, when it's finished, there's a story with every painting and of the people in it. HettyPagramansky.com And uh, Laura Silver says, Dear Hetty, how can you, can you tell us more about the ads in the subway car? Also, how does one liberate with paint? To liberate yourself, I have no idea. But my hope is to liberate all of you who hate the homeless people of dark complexion, people of light complexion, people who look as if they have a home to go to. Hispanic people, people with something which makes them look different from them, and people of different religions, and people who take care of others, who at the moment are really our heroes. You can only liberate yourself if you belong to the world, but not if you put a shield around you and say, I'm afraid. And I'm going to read you some more comments. Can everybody hear them? Everyone. Okay. Yes. Susan LaRosa from Henry Street oh. says, Hetty for president. <laughs> and Pat Haas says, bless you, Hetty. Love the perspective in your love, in your painting and life. Sandy says, love you, Aunt Hetty. And Tammy says, I love the stories. And, um... I think also the question about liberating, you had said you were going to liberate that guy. Could you say with you with your paint, if you could say more about that? Oh, yeah. Too. I'm giving him legs. 
I haven't done yet. Later on, when all of you are not watching, I'll be able to think. Now I'm thinking of you and begging you to stop the hate and the anger because if you kill somebody whose color you are against, or if you put a knife into the neck of a policeman whom you don't know, the result is the same. Somebody is hurt. And as long as we do that, it's only because we don't know these people. And I'm going to continue painting and drawing the people whom you need to look at. And I do want to live to a hundred. So. Or more. Or more. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I don't know because it's so awful not to be able to climb and run and do things. Then again, there are wheelchairs, see? Yes. Oh, you have a comment from Julie. She says, we hope you are enjoying this as much as we are. Mark, Charlie, and I agree that this weekly time with you has been the most redeeming feature of the quarantine. We miss you like crazy. One question, you have a question. <laughs> Do you draw, pencil in, the figures on the canvas before you start to paint them? No, this is the joy of canvas. I made big splotches. And when I did that on the street, people would walk by and make comments. It's good you keep busy. What on earth is this? And since I understand Yiddish and Spanish, what they thought I didn't hear, I heard. And I made up my mind, I have to do this. I have to do it, and I can't do it at home. I have to do it on the street, because otherwise I don't learn, and I don't see. And there was always somebody who would pass by and interpret for me. When I did the first paintings on the Lower East Side, there was a man who worked for Moscots, and he stood in back of me, and when he heard people say, oy vey, he would say, wait, it'll become a window. <laughs> and, and I missed that. And so the comments that you send me on Facebook, I love. It, you're going to be my street that I'm working on. Okay. And we have another one for you. Laura Silver says, amen. And Deborah Ferranti says, I first met Hetty when she made a donation of her art to the Mohawk Foundation, her heart is beautiful and we need more people like her. Thank you, Hetty, for being you. And I just want to say that we just have two minutes left. Can I mention something about the Henry Street Settlement? When I speak in schools and kids are feeling so depressed, especially children who've come here undocumented, and I tell them about Susan LaRosa, Henry Street Settlement. It's not her settlement. She's the one who wrote to me and became my friend when I did the painting. You know what they did? The story, do I have time for a very quick story? Very quick. Very quick, okay. The, there was a woman who wanted to change the world, as you and I are doing and are going to do. And she became a hospital nurse. And one day she was folding a sheet and a little girl ran in and nobody could understand what the little girl was saying. She was very dirty and had a frightening accent. Nobody could understand it. But the words that were clear were, mama, baby, blood. So this woman grabbed her sheets that she was folding and she ran with the little girl up a steep flight of broken stairs through the filthy streets. And there was a woman lying in bed, bleeding to death because when the doctor found out after he delivered her baby that she had no money to pay, he walked away. So Lillian Wald, that was the name of that wonderful woman 
She stent, she fixed the blood, she did everything. She took the children to be deloused. She got food for them. And she thought, I cannot afford to be a nurse. I have to change the system. And she did. The Henry Street Settlement is the reason why the world goes on. Thank you, Susan. <laughs> I love you all. Bye-bye. See you next week. See you next week, everyone. So Same see time. See you next week, next week. And thank my family who made me do this because I don't know <laughs> anything about technology. Oh, you have one more comment. Joe Tripp says he loves you. I love him, too. Okay. Yay, Hetty.